Hello, and welcome to the first part of the review and installation of the Morimoto Mini H1 Retrofit Kit provided from theretrofitsource.com. First off, I would like to apologize for the slight shaking in video. This is my first review and installation, and my camera mounting system had not yet been perfected. I will now go over everything found laid out here on the table. And miraculously enough, it all fits within this small box. As you see here, we have the Morimoto Gatling Gun 2.0 Shrouds. I have shown what they look like both unpacked and how they appear when they come in the box. Next there are two Morimoto Mini H1 Projector Assemblies. And over here we have the Morimoto XB35 Ballast. Next is the HD Relay, which for my purposes I chose the H11 Adapter, which will fit my vehicle two of the igniters which connect from the ballast to the bulbs, and here are the H1 XB 6500 bulbs themselves. Now for my project, instead of just getting one single set, I wound up getting two sets of XSB switchback halos, one 110 millimeter set and one 120 millimeter set. Both are constructed with LEDs and we will get to the differences later on in this video. Now looking down here at the bottom are the items that come with the set based on the shrouds and type of relay you selected. Here is the H1 harness which will connect from your factory input on the vehicle side to the H1 relay itself. Here are the shroud centric rings which aid in aligning the shroud itself to the projector housing. And this little confusing cable is simply made to test the entire system without having to connect anything permanently to the battery, which is why the leads are exposed. Read more about that on the retrofitsource.com. Finally, we have the invoice envelope, which includes the packing slip, some Morimoto stickers, links to installation guides, and other pamphlets. So with nothing further here, let's get to the post-installation review. Alright, so as far as the review goes, my first opinion on all the components were that they were of very, very sturdy construction. None of the parts seemed flimsy, none of the plastic seemed like overly thin or anything like that. And I also didn't find anything to be damaged upon receipt. Now the installation itself was actually not too difficult. Um, following the instructions provided by the retrofit source made everything a fairly easy process. Uh, I watched several of their videos before actually executing most of the steps. Um, my follies all came up with uh, the disassembly of my headlights, which was, um, you know, it's unique to each vehicle. It's, it's something that can change depending on the make and model and the actual construction of the headlight. So at no fault of the components, that was, you know, the one only hiccup I had. So you're probably wondering, how do they compare to the originals? Well, here I'll show you what they looked like before, and then what they looked like after, as well as all the operations. Here's a photo of the Plain Jane factory OEM installed headlights. Next you'll see the retrofit projector, as well as the two switchback halos present in both reflector bowls. Here is a shot of both halos in the daytime running light white mode. And finally, the amber color when used for turn signals or hazards. Alright, well after that lovely demonstration, what exactly is the downside of this whole system? 
Well, I'll tell you, it's the Halos. You see, the Halos, although they are the same manufacturer, same brand, um, same revision number, they are not identical, and it was only a matter of the size. Uh, the 110 millimeter and the 120 millimeter, they use different LEDs. They also use a different wiring system, being that one uses two and one uses three wires. Um, I believe that also means that the, uh, the driver that senses whether you are in a turn signal or in DRL mode also functions differently. Uh, I'll show you in a brief slow-mo video that there's actually a, a difference in timing between the two of them. Alright, about those LEDs. Size matters. The 120mm ring actually uses larger LEDs than that of the 110mm ring. They're also visibly spaced closer together and emit two different colors of light. Not to mention sheer brightness between the two. One last piece of criticism, while the halos are in turn signal mode and flashing amber, because they are different sizes and use different drivers, they flash at a slightly different rate. Hardly visible by the naked eye, but you can catch that something is off. Here I'll slow down a video so you can actually see what's going on. In recap, the projectors are of solid construction and great fitment inside the reflector bowl in the back of the Chevrolet Sonic. After contacting customer support at the retrofit source, they advised that I use the Gatling Gun 2.0s based on the size of my reflector bowl, which fit perfectly without any sort of trimming necessary. The Morimoto ballasts are compact and have a great mounting system. The wiring harness provides more than enough length to reach both headlights with slack. Again, the halos are ridiculously bright, and they too come with enough wiring to reach any part of the interior of the headlight. And something unique to the newer generation of Morimoto halos is the three mounting holes found on the outside of the ring itself. Now for a word of advice. If your headlight application can use 120 millimeter or bigger rings, use them. They are much brighter than the smaller sets of rings. Also, if you're going to be buying rings, try to buy all the same size because you don't know whether or not the LEDs that are used to manufacture that specific size are going to be of the same color or even the same size. Don't hesitate in calling the retrofit source and ask them to give you some information on what the halos look like before you even order them. Well, that's all I got for this review. I think it was a little long-winded myself. Thanks TRS for the outstanding customer support, and thanks for listening. Keep those headlights shining and drive safe.